So yesterday I finished my final A-level exam and in this video I will basically be reviewing the entire A-level exam process, how it went for me, how I felt it went at the time, how I feel it went now and giving some thoughts and feelings on the papers and the exams as a whole. So initially I'll give some thoughts on each paper, I'll then say how I expected it to go going into the exam, how I initially felt it went after I just came out of the exam and how I feel it went looking back at it now. And I will timestamp each subject down below so you can skip around to wherever suits you. So let's start off with AQA economics. So the first paper which I did for this was paper one, which is microeconomics or market structures and market failures. I felt the paper was okay. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't terrible. It was a pretty standard paper in my eyes. Although I think a lot of people may have struggled with this paper and I certainly gathered that a bit myself and talked to my friends because I think a lot of people were banking on some sort of externalities question or monopoly questions, but neither of those actually came up. I did the gig economy context and then the redistribution of income and wealth essay and I found it quite difficult to evaluate these so I'm not sure how well I did on those big 25 markers. Also I probably should say economics as a whole is a subject I put the least work into because I actually don't need to get a good grade in it at all, I only need to get an E in it so that may taint my opinions here slightly. So because I didn't put as much time and effort into revising economics I expected the micro paper, paper one, to be a 5 out of 10. And then initially when I came out on the exam hall, I probably thought it was a 4 out of 10. It went a little bit worse than I expected. Not too much worse than I expected, but just a little bit. I thought the questions were quite difficult. But looking back at it now, I'd probably rate it accordingly a 5 out of 10. And then the second paper for economics is paper 2, which is macroeconomics. And I actually think this paper was very nice. If anything, I think we were spoiled for choice. Other than the 15 markers, I think that all the 15 markers were quite difficult to write about. Other than the expenditure switching policy 15 marker, I think that was a nice one to write about. For the 25 mark, I did the supply side policy one, which I kind of regret now. I kind of wish I did the exchange rate one because I planned that essay before, but I just saw supply side policies and went for it. Even though that 15 marker for the supply side policies wasn't the best, it was about a positive output gap. And it was quite hard to write a detailed response to that, in my opinion. And coming out of the exam, there were a couple points of evaluation which I wish I'd put in, which I hadn't. I think for the context 25 marker, there were some things that I was missing out, which I was annoyed about coming out of the exam. But overall, I think I'm a bit better in macro than micro, so I expected this to be a 6 out of 10. Initially, when I came out, I'd say it basically went exactly how I expected. I was pretty happy, even though I did miss out a few points of evaluation. So I'd rate it a 6 out of 10 as I came out. And now, looking back at it, a few weeks later, I'd also rate it a 6 out of 10. And then the final AQA economics paper was paper free, which is kind of mixed of micro and macro. I thought this paper was really nice, but then I always thought I'd be best at paper free. The multiple choice questions, I think they were okay, but I think they were slightly harder than previous years, multiple choice questions. But I managed to get them done quite quickly, I think I did it in about 20 minutes, which left me a good portion of time to do the remaining questions. In hindsight, I probably spent a bit too long in the 10 and 15 marker, but I really wanted to do detailed responses in the exam, but it meant I had limited time left on the 25 marker. I only had about 40, 45 minutes, which considering I had an hour and 40 minutes to do the 10, 15 and 25, probably wasn't the best allocation of my time. Although the 25 marker itself, I think it was really nice. And I think paper free 25 markers are just nicer because the extracts are very helpful of outlining at least a plan or some points you can use in your essays. And in this 25 marker, I managed to get in quite a lot of detailed evaluation, which I was happy with. And this test, I literally finished as the exam finished. I finished my last word, looked up and the clock went red. So yeah, I felt this exam went the best out of the three. So going into the exam, I expected it to be a 7 out of 10, I expected it to be better than both micro and macro, and it was. And so coming out of the exam, I'd say it was probably an 8 out of 10, it surpassed my expectations, and looking back at it now, I'd agree with that, I'd say it went at 8 out of 10. Okay, now let's talk about LXL maths. So paper 1 was cure pure, and I thought that for an A-level maths test, this was probably the most difficult one I'd ever done. So I was able to finish and check every question, other than part B of the rhombus question, which had a really ugly answer. I'd probably pick up some working marks there, but I don't think I got the answer fully correct. So going into this, I expected it to be a 10 out of 10. I'm pretty confident with A-level maths. And coming out, I'd probably say it went a 9 out of 10, just because of that one rhombus question, which I didn't get the correct answer to. At least I don't think it was correct. Looking back at it now, I think that rhombus question probably was the only marks I dropped. So I shouldn't be too harsh on myself, but I'd probably say it went a 9 out of 10 still, just because I'm annoyed that I didn't get that question. Okay, paper two for maths is the second core pure paper. And I thought this paper was really, really nice. I was able to answer all the questions and I checked other things, so it should be pretty much full marks. And the nice thing about this is that it kind of relieved any stress going into the final paper, the mechanics and statistics paper, because I was pretty confident unless I absolutely had a shocker on paper three, I had done enough by this stage. So yeah, Corpia 2, I expected that 10 out of 10. Initially, I'd say it was 10 out of 10. Looking back at it now, 10 out of 10. Pretty, pretty nice. And then the final paper for A-level LXL maths was paper three, which is applied, so statistics and mechanics. I think this paper was pretty nice and all the questions were pretty standard. 
there weren't that many questions, which was nice. And the only one that took me a while was the statistics Venn diagram question, which I believe should be more than four marks. So yeah, I expected this to be a 10 out of 10. Initially, 10 out of 10. Looking back at it now, 10 out of 10. Okay, third, let's talk about AQA A-level physics. So paper one, I thought this was a nice paper, probably slightly easier than previous year's papers have been. I think I may have made a few small silly mistakes, but overall I was pretty content. And I felt that the advanced information for paper one was pretty helpful. So I'd expect it to go an eight out of 10. Initially coming out, I'd probably say it was a seven out of 10 just because I knew I made a couple of silly mistakes. But looking back at it now, I'd probably stick with my original eight out of 10. And then paper two. And I think objectively the paper was all right, but the advanced information for this paper was pretty poor. It felt as if the biggest topics were electric fields and capacitors, and these weren't even mentioned in the advanced information. And I do know the advanced information said that small tariff questions or multiple choice questions may not be mentioned, so technically they probably stuck to what they said. It was just a bit sneaky in my opinion. And there were also a couple of questions which I was a bit confused about, like the one about the excess electrons and the voltage in the power cable. So yeah, I expected this to probably go a 7 out of 10. I'm probably not as good on paper 2 compared to paper 1. Initially coming out, I'd probably say it was a 7 out of 10. And looking back at it now, I'll stick with that, a 7 out of 10. And finally, paper 3, and I should note here that I do the engineering section. Personally, I felt like the practical section of the test wasn't the best. Also, I don't really know why they put four questions in the practical section, where for the last four years, it's always been free, and there were three practicals mentioned in the advanced information. I was speaking to my friends afterwards, and we basically all said that this paper was quite weird. We're not entirely sure how well we've done, because I wasn't that confident that I answered the question fully correctly, or answered what they were asking. On the flip side though, I felt the engineering section was quite nice. So yeah, I probably expected this to go seven out of 10. Initially coming out of there, it would be a seven out of 10. Looking back at it now, I think I did a bit better than I initially thought, so I'd give an eight out of 10. And then fourth and finally, let's talk about LXL further maths. So paper one, which is Corpio one, and I felt this went really, really well. It was one of those good days where I managed to do every single question first time, checked it, it was right first try, and I was able to check every single question at least once. So going in there, I probably expected a nine out of 10, but initially coming out, I was pretty happy, so I'd say it was a 10 out of 10. And looking back at it now, I'm pretty happy with that paper, so I'd give it a 10 out of 10. And then there's paper two, which is the second Corpia paper. And I felt objectively this paper was quite nice, but I made a few silly mistakes. So firstly, I misread the matrices question about the percentage increases and decreases, which obviously led to me getting that question wrong. Hopefully I still pick up some working marks though. And I did complete the final two parts of the last question, but I don't think I got what they were looking for. I don't think I differentiated it the easiest way essentially. So that's probably another three or four marks lost. And also there was just other general silly mistakes. So like the polynomials question, I initially forgot the minus one in the end. It was stuff like this. It just wasn't my best day from the exam. I also took way too long on the area under the graph for the polar coordinates question until I finally remembered you can do tan squared plus one equals sex squared to help with your integration. So I expected this to go nine out of 10. Initially coming out of that exam, I was pretty upset with myself that I'd made these silly mistakes. So initially I'd probably give it a six out of 10. Although looking back at it now, I think I was probably too harsh on myself that six out of 10. Yes, I made a couple of silly mistakes, but I don't think I would have dropped more than eight, nine, maybe 10 marks, which hopefully still leaves me in the A star range, hopefully. And then paper three for further maths, which for me is further statistics. I thought this was a really nice paper, especially after paper two, it didn't go the best for me. I was making a couple silly mistakes in the beginning, but I was able to spot them quite quickly. Although the only thing that annoys me about applied maths in general is that it's a lot harder to check your answers or to know that you're correct. So I'm not entirely sure that I got everything correct, but I'm pretty confident. So I expected that to be a nine out of 10 again, Initially coming out of that, it basically went how I expected, so 9 out of 10. And then now, I'd probably give it 9 out of 10 as well. And then my fourth and final paper, which was Further Maths, Further Mechanics. And going into this paper, I was still a bit nervous, all because of Corpia 2. However, this paper went really well for me. I had about 40 minutes left at the end, and although it is difficult to check your answers to Further Mechanics questions, I think I did an all right job of this. I was just substituting values for M and U, checking everything works, checking acceleration's constant between two bodies, and kind of doing weird checks, but... It worked. So if before the exam season started, I had to predict which paper I think I do the worst in out of all four further maths papers, I'd probably say further mechanics. So I was going into this kind of expecting it to be like an eight out of 10. Although initially coming out of there, I was pretty happy. I'd give it a nine out of 10. And looking back at it, even though it's a day later, I think it went as well as it could have gone. So I'd give it a 10 out of 10. So yeah, that's my opinion on all 13 papers I did for my A-levels. Looking at the whole exam season holistically, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty confident that I've got the grades I need to get to go to my first year of university, which above all is, is the main goal here. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that if you too had A-levels or GCSEs or any other type of exams, that they too went well. I'll keep you updated and see you next week.